Welcome back. Well, you might have seen the news this week that the Larry Miller organization sold its 54 dealerships for, I don't know, chump change, $3.2 billion. Now, of course, folks also knew him from the jazz ownership and lots of other businesses. But, you know, few knew Larry H. Miller in a simpler time. This was way before the billions of dollars of business. Craig Worth once took a ride with Larry Miller in his old car of a different time just to talk about those days. Hi, Craig. Howdy, and yes, it was not a story about the jazz or modern dealerships. And this isn't a story with fancy pictures of the late Mr. Miller and his team or his businesses that were just sold for billions. It is a story that all took place in and around a 1963 Ford, a simple car and a simple ride that I took with him 30 years ago. Now, very little of this conversation was ever seen until tonight. A lot of people uh, that have known me in the past note that I still wear the same watch and ring that I've worn for years and, and driving this 63 Falcon Sprint convertible I've had since it was nine months old. Uh, all, I think, helped me to keep a balanced perspective. When my wife and I were dating, uh, we graduated from high school in 1962 and we were dating and the year after we graduated this car was made. It was manufactured in 63 and we bought it when it was nine months old. It had 13,000 miles on it and, and it was nine months old. We just fell in love with it. We got married three years later and over a period of time, both before and after we were married, I began converting it more and more into a race car. Um, I thought the 260 was fast when we bought it and then I learned, eh, it'd be a lot faster with the 289 and then came uh, uh, Cobra heads and a, a mechanical lifter, solid lifter cam. Sure, he loved to race, but he kept returning to that simpler time of a young couple on a Friday night on State Street. And I'd gathered parts, I think for the better part of four years, and, and the day before I was going to finally put it in the body shop and do what would become a one-year restoration, a, a wholesaler came in the driveway at the dealership I was working in Colorado had this car. And I thought, well, Gail will never know. So we restored it completely, cosmetically. And uh, I was going to give it to her for her birthday. I bought it in April. I was going to give it to her in October. Couldn't get done. The following Mother's Day was the day we picked. But he never did fix the original car. Never found time in a complicated new world. Oh, but he found an identical twin car because he longed to remember the days of when he dated Gail. To me, it's a car with a personality. It's a car that makes a statement about when it was built, and when it was built happens to be a time that is a time I like remembering. And it's almost like, to understand it, you have to, to be a part of it and have one. I think if somebody had never experienced a car like this, they could never understand the feelings and the sensations that come with being in, in a car of this era, and I think particularly a convertible. I think a convertible is, uh, is a whole different set of feelings. Why I drive it when I have a choice of all the cars uh, that I have a choice of today. Um, but this is uh, a very relaxing experience for me. It's uh, any time I'm in this car, I can really sort things out. It was in the car. He could leave his complicated life and drive back to the memories of the 1950s and 60s in the red Ford convertible and revisit his days just after his time at West High. That used to be Genie Boys on that corner. It was a drive-in that a lot of uh, a lot of kids would go to from this end of town, and it was uh, you kind of had hires up on the north end, and Genie Boys down here, and a few in between. You're with Don Carlos. A time that was so different. Well, I think at that time my goals were to be uh, a championship softball player, to uh, have a fast race car and to get a job that had a future to it but I didn't really have uh, much of a plan on how to go about doing never occurred to me that someday all this area of state we were dragging would ever turn into uh, a situation where a large uh, corridor of it would uh, have my name on it someday 54 dealerships would finally have his name on them but I bet he never forgot the old Ford car now, Larry H. Miller died in 2009, always a car guy at heart to the end.